we're going to look at the properties of water today and with respect to how they apply to IB biology. Because water is one of the most important molecules that allows life to occur on Earth. We need to start off by looking at a water molecule. Your voice has changed. This is my sensible voice, and now I have to edit this, you horrible girls. Okay. I'm trying to talk clearly. Yes, not manly enough, you say. Okay, downwards, downwards, downwards. Okay. If we go back to grade 10 chemistry, oxygen, number 8 on the periodic table, has an electron structure of 2,6, or 6 valence, valence electrons. We draw this. And then, if we look at hydrogen, there is one valence electron. We get shared electron pairs or covalent bonds. But the net result is that our water is not straight. It is shaped like this. What effect does that have? Well, if we think a little bit, we know electrons are negative. There's a lot of electrons up here and here, which makes this negative overall. Protons in the hydrogen here and here make these ends positive overall. Now, unfortunately, it's not that simple. We've invented these symbols to explain this. We would actually say that there is a dipole. A what? A negative dipole? Negative charged end. And positive dipoles, positive charged ends here. If we look at this at a different scale and make this a little bit simplistic, let's call this a water molecule, another water molecule. Water molecules, we'll draw a few <coughs> water molecules just because we can. Now what we know is we have the negative dipoles and the positive dipoles. We also know negative and positive attract. So by thinking a little bit, we realise there must be some sort of bonding happening between our water molecules, between the negative portions, or dipoles, and the positive dipoles. We know water's a liquid, so these can't be fixed bonds. They have to be breaking and reforming all the time to allow water to be a liquid. But we have these temporary bonds holding our water particles together. What does this actually mean? Firstly, we know these bonds hold the water molecules together. This means it's actually going to take some energy to break the water molecules apart. And this has a lot of consequences on the world around us. For a start, if we sweat, and that sweat is evaporated, energy is used to evaporate the water particles, and they leave carrying that energy, and this cools us down. Another effect would be for plants, when they have a long xylem, and water evaporating from the top. Excuse my badly drawn plant, but as the water molecules evaporate from the top, they have those weak bonds to the particles below them pulling them up. The net consequence, water is carried from the roots of the plant all the way to the leaves. Another way to look at this same issue would be, would be to think of an orange juice that you're drinking. You suck the orange juice particles from the top of your straw, which are attached to the next particles, which are attached to the next. So as you suck on the top ones, it pulls all of the particles up. This is because the particles are stuck together by these bonds. 
This is called cohesion. A really nice way to see cohesion, where water particles stick to themselves, is if we have water on top of a coin. Common sense tells us the water is just going to pour off the sides. However, when we look at it, the particles hold on to each other and will actually fill up and at times even slightly overflow the edge of the coin. We do get to a point if we keep adding water where the force of gravity will be greater than the force of the bonds between the water molecules. But this shows us the water molecules are holding on to each other to create surface tension through the process of cohesion. Now if we go back to our original diagram to look at these bonds, they have a name. These bonds are called hydrogen bonds. And these hydrogen bonds give water the properties it needs that allow life to occur on Earth. Now some of these properties are cohesion, where water particles stick to them water particles stick to each other. Adhesion, where water particles stick to other substances. The very high specific heat capacity of water. And the fact that water is a good solvent, particularly for polar molecules. All of these are due to hydrogen bonds between water molecules. The IB expects you to be able to explain each of these in terms of the hydrogen bonds. And these are the properties that allow life to exist on Earth. These are the properties of water that enable life on Earth to exist.